Okay, so building upon my live stream series, we have now come to the metal mask and I want to dissect and take a look at how I built it and uh, let's dive into it now. Okay, so I want to dissect the metal mask and that's whatever that takes away reveals the underlying metal here. So we have uh, we have scratches. Let's take a look. Some of this is procedural and some is painted. So let's see what we have here. So we can see uh, there is uh, some extent of uh, procedural stuff going on here. And we definitely have some painted stuff. So um, let's take a look. Let's turn off the light so we can see the mask by itself. First off, there's a curvature. So this is a, a Modo bake and I'm gonna actually make an episode how to bake stuff in Renderman soon. We have the curvature. This is a radio node as in previous lessons. So we have a histogram scan node and that's a way to make contrast. So let's make one of those and see what you can do. So double click on that one. We can see here the histogram scan node is a node to give contrast around the value. So default it doesn't do anything if it's the position is 0.5. So if I crank this up you see it's gonna go contrasty. And then we can sh choose around what range we want this contrast to appear. So, so this is a good node to uh, take this kind of procedural bakes and level them around. I use this a lot and this is an extension pack and it's Jens Kaffitz that so gracefully put this together. So there's a few of those. There's also histogram, select, shift, and uh, range, they have different purposes. So histogram scan is a really good node. And looking at this, I I, I take away some of um, stuff there onto the barrel with a with a paint node. Let's go to orthographic. So I just multiply a um, take away some of the stuff there. It's not so obvious there, okay. So this node here I see I disabled, so it, this one actually doesn't do anything at the moment. I think I was testing something there. Um, I have a brightness lookup, so let's actually re-enable that one and see, see what happens. I think I was playing with, um, yeah, I was tuning down something there on, on a few areas. But as it's disabled, I might have tried actually once, like maybe crunch it up even more or something. So this one actually is not doing anything at the moment. So I could, I could just do like that to take that away. Looking at the next node here, I have a breakup going on here. So it's a, um, it's an axis projection, and the axis projection is essentially the same thing as a tree planner node but it's an extension pack version of it that has some extra features you can you have more inputs that's one thing so you can sync a few of these with the uh, outside uh, um, like for example you can have a, a float value you can set numbers and pipe them into world scale or uh, angle or anything like that uh, and if you would have a few of them you can all be synced by a number or something. Uh, in this case the axis projection is if I create a tree planar projection this similar I can demonstrate this by just taking this map here and drag it to the three inputs looking at it have to set the scale to something. Let's see what scale this one had, 100. So there we go, it's similar. But I like this better because it's 
it's uh, just one image input and that's something I uh, almost extensively use. I don't really have different inputs on my chip planners. It's kind of the same base image nine times out of 10. So axis projection is my go-to node for this type of effect. So I level it here with the histogram scan to make some contrast and I add it on top here as an overlay. Let's take a look. Here we go. So I'm breaking up the curvature there. And then I add some crunch to it. Exaggerate it a bit. So this one I think I was doing something here as well. So this one is not really doing anything at the moment. I um, I think I had it as a, a general uh, once, uh, like a general dirt in the one that I have now. I think I took it away. So I was texturing this a few months ago, so I can't really recall. So here, here's another breakup, and this one is more severe. So. Here we start to ship off. So this one is a, uh, a gizmo node I created. So I have it saved here under nodes, meshman, dirt, axis adjust. So this is, is, is a very basic node. So if I click on it, looking at it, pipe it into my, here we have it. It's a combination of um, So it's a, it's a it's essentially a gizmo. So uh, what it does here for me here it creates it creates this uh, and it's just a way to to uh, take a texture and contrast it further, multiply it against this. So I get even more breakup. Let's see before and after. So we can just. Hit the D button here, so it does this to my edges. Even more chips there, and then let's take a look here. This one, this one adds a very subtle, like micro uh, scuff, like it's been uh, worn down. So we start to see some kind of metal, and so. It's this. This is what's happening here, and that is consisting of an, another axis projection, brightness lookup to level it, and I merge it together with with a cloud. That's kind of a broad one, and the cloud is is I think I've extended it to. Uh, scale it in Y so I have some kind of like you know you can see that it's directionality I have a brightness lookup to level it merge it down so we get this and then we have something else here I think yeah I have a another radio node here with um, occlusion that I level and multiply it against. And then, then I actually do a, a paint there to further knock down areas. So this is the only real paint node in, in this branch there. And then I, uh, let's see, do I, uh, yeah, I use a screen there to, to introduce it. So there we have, a base for it and then we have I think yeah I inserted a bake point there I think um, this one is not active so I think I had some just perform performance optimization there when I was doing some texturing here so sometimes I I bake down an area so everything upstream of here would uh, not be evaluated and be frozen and let's see I can yeah it's out of date let's see how it looked when I was baking it okay can take it away actually okay and now let's see so here 
here we start to add the actual painted scratches etc so we'll have something first I have a, a black and white here add scratches I have another merge here that I, where I merge another set of scratches I think I was working here in um, yeah okay so I know what I did so I broadcasted these scratches into a uh, an own channel that I use to ship away paint through a few different effects so that's why I I had it on its own so this is the general and this is this layer here is actually used in other places as well so let's look at so yeah it's it's this effect that I use to level stuff. Could delete that one as well. I was probably testing something there. Let's see. Yeah. I have some, uh, yeah. I use a displacement or a bump here that's kind of a weld seams at a level and add it back into the scratches here so they are synced and I use this as a mask to reveal where they are so let's see what that does yeah so that's the weld seams there and that builds this uh, metal mask I think yeah I broadcast it here or clamp it I, I all, always clamp my nodes or my masks so if it's gonna be a, um, if you have like multiplies and overlays and screens and ads, it's always safe to clamp it before you uh, use it as a mask because you don't want values above one when it's a mask. It can be strange stuff. So I have a bake point here that's out of date at the moment there. But yeah, bake point is good when you uh, want to have fast interaction. A bookmark here just to, if I hit the B button, if I want to go to my metal mask, I'm gonna quickly come to that. Then we have um, a transmitter node here and one of the nodes is actually for exporting or both of them. But this one, the metal mask, is what I broadcast into my uh, here. So this is where I add things together in my uh, materials. If I go up here and look at this, this is where I add my painted metal over the base metal. and. I use I use this one and I also use my ISO body here to add it together so first I have uh, my metal mask I invert it and then I say okay I want uh, this to be applied so I multiply the ISO body on top so I, now I only get what's supposed to be the painted metal here but I also use the same, for example, alloy. Here I have another metal mask instance. Same goes here, I have the ISO alloy. I invert it, do the same thing here. So now it's the, this, the gunmetal part there. I use it over here, I think. Let's see, red material. Metal mask, yeah, same goes there, but I didn't have scratches on it, so it's not as important. But if I introduce scratches, it's gonna work. It's set up correctly. The gun holder, that's this. Same goes there. So we have uh, the metal mask there. The ISO for it, added together. Yeah, and I think, yeah, this one was only 
on the actual decal. So we have the decals coming in and I add the mask, I ship away into, so I add them on top there. So this adds everything together there. So yeah, that's, that's a look on the metal mask and how that was built. And as you see, it, it, it wasn't that um, many actual paint nodes. So I try to hold it procedure as long as I can and add my specific stuff here in the end. So it's kind of easy to update this. And uh, up to here, it's kind of, it's almost procedural. I had to paint a little here to take away some of that. Thanks for hanging out with me here today. And remember to hit the bell notification and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And if you like this, just hit the thumbs up and leave your comments in the section below. And see you next time. Bye bye.